finally, you have arrived to the very last subtopic for circuits. So circuits is a study of physics that is quite abstract. Uh, it will be a bit more practical if you get to build your own circuits and play with it. But if not, then it requires you to really understand the foundational concepts starting from chapter 9. It's like a long saga here. Okay, but if you know your ideas about potential meter and potential divider and potential difference and potential and potential drop and all that jazz, this uh, video could just be a revision for you. Okay, so in this video, I'm just going to cover some circuits and talk about how to analyze them because you will know whether you understand your concepts or not if we give you a new circuit like this one up here and you know what to do with it. All right, so let's look at the first connection. For this one, we have four resistors uh, connected in such a method. This kind of connection, right, this one is generally called a Wheatstone bridge. Okay, sometimes they can draw it this way. Sometimes they can draw it in a diamond shape because it looks fancy. And we're all about that fancy looking bling bling diamond. Okay, it's joking. Uh. The same circuit, okay. The only difference is instead of an ammeter, instead of the ammeter here, I go and put the 40 ohm resistor here. Meh. Okay, but don't worry first, don't worry, don't worry. Let's start with the first one. Okay, so the first one is a general setup. Okay, uh, if I want to redraw the circuit, it can... Why do I say it's similar? Uh? Um, well, because if you look at the battery, right, there are two closed loops. The first loop is coming up from here, then pass through R1, pass through R2, and then go back to the negative terminal. Okay, so if let's say this one gets a boost of 12 volt, then uh, it will be shared across R1 and R2. So let's say this is plus 12 volt. The second loop is actually here. Okay, so we're going to make a condition or better simplify our scenario first by using the most basic situation where number one, the emitter reading is zero, indicating that there is no current flow in the emitter. If there's no current flow in the emitter, then the potential here, let's say A, and the potential here, let's say B, VA must be equal to VB or VX, VY, call whatever alphabet you want, all right? So, if you think about this, right, this battery will boost up the potential here to be 12 volt, okay? And it will also boost up this side to be 12 volt as well, okay? So here to here, all 12 volt. Connected directly, ma. okay? All right, so, and then this boost is 12, meaning down here is zero volt. So this is zero, zero, zero okay so if i say va is equal to vb it means that whatever potential drop that happens here v1 must be the same as the potential drop that happens here v3 okay because you know 12 minus va must be equal to 12 minus potential at b and 12 minus va is v1 and 12 minus vb is v3 so basically, the potential difference across R1 must be the same as the potential difference across R3. Teacher, I know this stuff really, very good. Okay, So we can continue here. And number one, I noticed that R1 and R2 is in series. So I'm going to call this I1. Okay, the current that is flowing through here. Lah. I'll call this I1. And the current that is flowing through this part. I guess I will call it I2. Okay, call it whatever you want. So from here, if V1 is equal to V3, I can then say this is I1 R1 is equal to I2 R3. Put one side first. Don't know what to do. Okay. What else can we say? Since VA is equal to VB, I can also say that VA minus zero is equal to VB minus zero. What means, Cher? What means? Well, the drop here to here is VA minus zero from VA drop to zero. 
So let's say I call this V2 because it's across R2. And let's say I call this V4 because this is across R4. Okay. So similarly, to find the potential drop, you will take VA here, minus 0, and VB here, minus 0. So this one, you can write V2 is equal to V4. Wait a minute. We can write this as I1 because the current, the green color current is in series with R1. I1, R2 is equal to, for V4, you can use I2, R4. I don't know about you, but I want to divide them. Did you know why? Because the current can cancel and my equation is simpler. So equation 1 and equation 2. I am going to take, I don't know, 1 divided by 2, 2 divided by 1. Maybe I'll take 1 divided by 2. So if I take 1 divided by 2, you can see I1 and I1 kind of cancel out. I write for you. Lah. I1, R1 over I1, R2. And the other side here will be I2, R3 over I2, R4. So the I is bye-bye. Then what we have now is R1 over R2 is equal to R3 over R4. I'm not going to draw a box around this because I can change the label. Now I 1, 2, 3, 4. Later I 1, 2, 3, 4. Or 1, 2, 3, 4. You get the point. Don't memorize this kind of thing. Okay? Learn to identify where the potential is equal. Okay? For example, uh, VA equal to VB. So 1 is equal to 3. And 2 is equal to 4. Use IR. Okay? To solve this. Don't go and memorize. Uh, I can change the label the resistor. Then it's gg.com. Okay? So sometimes MCQ will give you a random collection of circuits. Mm, you just have to rearrange it. Uh, solve it using this method, okay? Be mindful that the current can cancel out, especially if it's connected in series. Let's look at the second one. For this one, I say this is similar to this because if you check properly, oh, there is a part here. I can connect like that. Uh. See, this one is closed, no? Hmm. Hey, guys. You notice that this is 20, this is 20. So I know that this is plus 10. Oh. You boost by 10 volt. All right. So if this one boosts by 10 volt, then what we'll do now is we will also see that this part here is 10 volt. Because again, you connect from here to here. Ma. This is 10. Okay. And this part here for zero volt because this one connect from here to here. Right. So if this is 10, 20, 20, they will share half, half, right? So this one here is 5 volt. So here to here, we minus 5 volt. Here to here, we use up another 5 volt. 10 minus 5 is 5. 5 minus 5 is 0. Perfection. Where's the second loop? Well, the second loop is from the power supply branch up. Like this. So if I zoom out a bit, you will notice that they're actually the same circuit. It's just one they draw, one is more fancy, and then they rotated it 90 degrees. Yeah. Okay. So the question here is, what is the potential difference for the red color loop? Well, it's still going to be 10, and because it's still 20, 20, so the same thing will happen here. This will be 5 volt. Hey, guys. Up here is 5 volt. Down here is 5 volt. Is the potential the same? Yes. The current? No. Okay. So in this case, same potential. Five volt across the 40, I mean, on both sides of the 40 ohm resistor. So because of this, no current in it. Okay. So when I say bridge, right, I mean this is actually a bridge. Right? Okay. 
this is my bridge. So I got question. My question is, what if I change one of the value of R? One of the 20 ohm. I change it. Okay. Let's say, for example, I change this one to 5 ohm. So let's say this is the variable resistor. Let's so call this R1. I'll call this R2. Let me make sure I label them similar color. Ah, uh, yeah. This one is R3, R4. So let's say I call this R3, this is R4, then this is R1, this is R2, okay? So what are the small changes that I will do now? I will change the potential, uh, I mean, I will change the resistance R3, okay? So if uh, R3 increases or the decreases, change to 5 ohm. What happens? Hmm. Will it still be 5 volt here? No larger, the, the, the ratio is different now, correct? So if that's the case, right, when we change, this is 5 ohm. This is 20 ohm. Okay? On one side, it's still going to be 10. On the other side, it's still going to be zero. But this point here that is connected out to the 40 ohm, it's not going to be 5 volt. Let's say this is point M. I want to find Vm. Teacher, I know we use the potential divider method. Ah, so smart are you? So smart, very good. So we can take 10 over the total resistance, which is 5 plus 20. Okay. I want to find how much is the potential drop from here to here. So 10 over 5 plus 20, this one is equal to, I guess, uh, V1, oh, this one is V3, V3 over the resistance 5. So I have 50 over 25, V3 is 2 volt. Okay, V3 is 2 volt. So if this is 2 volt, 10 minus 2 means this part here is 8 volt. Okay. Remember the bottom part of this 40 ohm? Bottom part of this 40 ohm is 5 volt. Because I didn't change the bottom part. Now. This is 5 volt. So will there be current flow? Yes. Where would the current flow? From high potential... 8 volt to low potential 5 volt. Let's say this is I. Miss, can we calculate I? Can. You can use V equal to IR to find I, where V is the potential difference. So the difference here is 8 minus 5 is equal to I times 40. So you can find 40, which is, I mean I, which is 3 over 40 ampere. Of course, you can press your calculator. Okay, so if R3 changed to 5 ohm, we are no longer at balance length, okay? Your current will flow already across the 4 ohm. Can I? All right. Teacher, can they ask question like this, uh, where it is uh, not balanced? Can, can. Okay, so the next example that I will show you will be like this one. <laughs> balance. Mm. Okay, this is an objective question. We, from Winter 17, Paper 1 to Question 37. Okay, we just want to showcase some example where this one kind of sort of looks like this, but we only we add on another internal resistor here. Are your teacher? They can add however they want. Yeah, lah. They can put all your understanding together from a circuit into a question like this one. Okay, so I will encourage you to pause the video and try out the question first because the question actually just wants us to find R and then come back again and compare your working and my working. Pause, go do. Okay, I assume you got do, ah. Scouts honor, okay? Never do, then you lose the chance to level up. Set. All right, so this one, first thing I do, I see the lost vote, ah. I'm going to mark this 4 ampere here. So the lost votes here, this 4 ampere will also be passing through here because the branching actually happens here. This is 1.0 ampere. So from Kirchhoff's first law, or logical, 4 go in, from the upper branch, we have 3. Now, 4 go in, upper branch get 3. 
then lower branch gets one. After this, I don't know. Uh, I put I, I I withhold first. I just put like that first. Okay. But I do know that later, don't know how, they will still combine to get four and clear. Because current conservation of charge. So meaning the lost votes here, the potential drop from here to here will be four times zero point five, which is two votes. Okay, I write working. Loss votes is equal to IR. So that would be 4.0052 volt. Okay. Two volt. Great. Beautiful. How much is left? Out of 12, 2 is given to internal resistance. So only 10 is left. This is 10 volt. This going to be, I mean, if you want to, this is 12 volt. This is 10 volt. Lah. 10, 10, 10, 2 volts. So between them, it's 10. The potential difference from here across here is 10. Okay. What are the things that I know? Next one. You look at this yellow current. This is a branch, right? Some will go down, but some will travel straight. It's like a branch. It splits into two. Okay. So just by conservation of charge, if the one that splits into the bottom branch is 0 0.5, then the branch here would be uh, 3 minus 0 0.5, which is 2.5 ampere. Okay. And this one will continue down this journey. We come up. Now this one that branches out, so the other branch, if you want, I can draw here. Lah. This is the other circuit flow. It goes down this way. Okay. It will actually combine with the green color current 1 ampere. See? It will combine with the green color. Then finally, it will go back here and join all its friends. So all three will combine here to get your 4 ampere. So here will be 0 0.5 plus 1.0. This one would be 1.5 ampere because this one that comes here is 0 0.5 ampere. Okay. Wait a minute. I know that the whole thing is 10. So I can use V equal to IR for this green current, this part here. V equal IR. Okay. Or mm, this is 10. The current is not the same. So I1, R1, but thankfully the resistance is the same. Lah. I2, R. So the first one is 1 ampere times R. The second one is 1.5 ampere times R. So this one will be 10 is equal to 2.5 R. R is equal to 4 ohms. Okay. Another method is actually to Kirchhoff second law, the outer loop. Lah. Kirchhoff second law, this loop. You want to do this loop because it has the resistance up. But I didn't use it directly. So the answer is 4 ohm. Okay. Um, just to double check, the thing is, we don't know the value of this resistor and this resistor. So there's no way to tell the potential difference or the actual potential difference across them. Just like I also don't really know the value of s so I, I can't i can't i can't show you the potential gradient from here to here not possible i can only work with the bottom branch so you want to use the top loop it's all kind of sus law because you don't have this r i don't have this r all right so these are bridge circuits there are many many variation in your syllabus so please go try them go try them these are all past your questions okay so the main principle is still identify the loop look at the potential drop start from there okay if needed, if it helps your brain, you can catch off second law all the closed loops because they are the same thing. Okay, you can catch off second law. Everything. This one also can catch off second law. All right. Okay, to know more is to do more. I'll see you in the next videos. Not sure which one you'll watch next. Take care. Stay safe now, stay sane. Bye bye.